preach five minutes, ten minutes, fifty minutes, whatever you want to do. Amen. Once my soul was straight from the heavenly way, I was as wretched and vile as could be. But my Savior in love gave me peace from above. When He reached down His hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me. He had to reach way on down. For me, I was near to despair when he came to me there and he reached down his hand for me. What a thrill and a joy to know that we were unworthy. Wretched, vile, undone, lost, blind, sick, hell-deserving. But He commended His love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Thank God. This is juicy, isn't it? I love it. I love it. My brother sitting there by the side of me a while ago, he said, there's something here. I said, Amen. I thank God for that. I, and this is one of those churches that I'd, I'd pay to get to come preach. Amen. Tommy Tillman, I, I want... Uh, you you'd have to know this man, and you'd have to you'd have to just know him and know what God's used him to do and what God is using him to do, and the realness of this man, the realness, oh the realness, and I trust and pray that God will do something for this man. I, you know, brother uh, Lawson said everything was just swiped away. Knowing Brother Tillman as I do, and you, some of you do, that don't mean a thing. That's right, brother. That's right. Don't mean a thing. Just don't mean. He said, "Here we go again, Lord." Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Where most folks would be down, moaning, groaning, beating the ground, pulling their hair, slobbering over mm-hmm. the Tommy just said, "What next, Lord? Amen. What next?" So, if you ever get a chance. And we're are in walking distance, say fifteen or twenty miles, go to see him. Yes, sir. Go to see him. <laughs> kind of rub up against him. Yes, sir. Shake hands with him two or three times. Yeah. And uh, just just know you've been with one of God's special men. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, I want you to open your Bible now for a few minutes. I and I'll stop anywhere you want to come to the altar. I'll stop. It, you're not going to interrupt me. You're just not going to do it. Amen. You're not going to bother me at all. Turn your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. I, I'm always amazed and I'm always astonished when Brother Lawson calls me and said, uh, I want you to come preach. My, I feel so unworthy to fill this pulpit. I mean that from my heart. It's not false modesty. I'm just saying that from my heart. And I'm honored to get to come here to this great church and just be with you and just to be among you. Let's stand and read Nehemiah 6, please. And I want to read just a little bit. Now, I won't read much because... I just have a few things I'd like to share with you. Starting at verse 1, Now it came to pass, 
when Sanballat and Tobiah and Grisham and the Abrahite and the rest of, the, of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the door upon the gates. And Sanballat and Grisham sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plains of Ona. But they thought to do me mischief. I used to pastor these fellows right here. <laughs> and I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Father, uh, you've given me a few things to say, and I want to say them. I want to be a help and a blessing to those that are here and to those that are listening by other mediums. I pray, God, that you would bless and uh, send to the heart of everyone that needs it right now what you have given us to say. I pray for Brother Randall Hedrick in the hospital in Chattanooga that's hanging between life and death. Only you know the outcome of this awful tragedy. I pray for him and others like him that are going through moments and times of trouble. Wouldst thou bless them and touch them according to your will. For Christ's sake, amen. amen. You may be seated. I said jokingly probably <clears throat> that I used to pastor folks like Sanballat and Tobiah and all of this crowd that I just read about. The reading of Nehemiah will be profitable unto you if you'll do it. If you'll take time to read this entire book, which is not large at all, you will be enriched greatly when you've completed it. I'm just going to jump in here and just uh, in this spot, I will cover a great deal of the book of Nehemiah but just a thought. Here was the king's cupbearer that had been sent back and permitted to go back to his hometown, so to speak, and be rebuild the walls that had been torn down, that had been destroyed. And he was very sorrowful about that. And permission was given to him to go back and to do the work that he wanted to do. But I want us to jump in right here where the wall, well, there's, oh, there's so much here that I don't have time to even, uh, to even start to cover. But here's a man and his people that are working night and day, sometimes long hours, and they begin to build a wall to... Get the wall rebuilt. And all of a sudden, and I want you to get this, you'll never start to do anything for what the devil, if it's for God, the devil's going to try to hinder it. Amen. Do I hear amen? amen. If, you, <clears throat> if you are launch out on what God has led you to do, I want you to know here and now, don't think for one minute that it's going to all be sunshine. It's not going to be easy. I'm heading toward my 60-year mark in the ministry. And I look back now, and I want you to know, I see every of you young preachers, and I get a request every day almost, said, could I come and just sit down and and talk to you, and, and let you tell me. Uh, they're wanting me to tell them experiences of what maybe has taken, taken place in my life. But I want to sum it up by saying this. Every step that I've ever made for God, the devil's been on my trail. And it'll be the same with you. Young preacher, if you're here today, I want you to get this message loud and clear. The devil's got plans for you. 
The devil wants to hinder you every single solitary way that he can. Not only preachers, if you want to do anything for God, the devil is going to be on your trail. But notice now, they got the message to old brother Nehemiah and said, uh, we, we need to have a business meeting. We need to have a conference. You need to come down the wall, just disregard that, and come down. I want to, and Nehemiah sent him right back. He said, I can't come down. I ain't a coming down. I won't come down. And he didn't, the Bible doesn't say this, but I believe he leaned over the wall and said, <laughs> on you. I'm not coming down. I won't come down. That's what the devil wants for you to, to stop what you're doing for God and go back like you used to be. That young man stood up there just a minute, a few minutes ago, and I discern in his testimony that there was a time of departing from the Lord. I guess, I guess there's been a time in most of our life we've took some steps backwards, haven't we? Hello? Steps that I deeply regret and I'm sorry about, but my dear friend, listen to me. I'm glad God is still waiting like the prodigal's daddy till when we come home. Amen. 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 I want to just use a little simple subject. I'm not deep. Oh, I'm so shallow. But let me use just a thought. I want to give you some reasons why I won't come down. I ain't going to come down. My doctor, i got a good doctor. He's a good old boy. I, I like him. And I'm supposed to see him on the 29th. And I know before I go in what he's going to tell me. And I believe he's akin to Tobiah. I really do. Grisham, one of one of the other of these kin to, he'll come walking in the door and he said, You mean you're still preaching? Amen. Amen. Yes. He said, and the next thing he's going to say, he says that every time you've paid your dues, come on, preacher. <laughs> His name's John. I I I have I've I've gotten by all these years putting up with that, but I'm thinking about on the 29th. Saying, come over close. I'm setting up on a little table, you know. I'm 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 I'm, I'm a good notion. Just say, John, come over. My ear, my hearing is getting a little bad, and that's the truth. And if I can get him close enough to me, I'm gonna box his jaw. <laughs> See, if there's anything the devil wants to stop, it's old-time preaching. Every week, almost somebody said, we're looking for a pastor. I don't know why they call me, because I ain't the one to do it. <laughs> Too old and sick, and I've done it, I've done it for a while, and the Lord help <laughs> They've called me and said, we're looking for a pastor. <laughs> you know the tragic era in folks looking for a pastor. You can find a preacher behind every tree. Amen. Any variety you want. Hello? But there's a difference in a pastor and a preacher. You can get a slobber on five rows if you want to, but a pastor has got to have some wisdom. Hello? And I'm going to tell you something right now. I ain't a coming down from old time preaching. I see preachers change. Oh, they've changed. Oh, God, they've changed. They, here they are, used to be full of God, full of fire, full of power. And now then, they're not preachers anymore. They're speakers. They're speakers. I ain't no speaker. I'm a preacher. 
John closer enough, I'm going to lay it on him this time. Of course, you look pretty puny the last time. I don't know whether it'll be hard or not. I ain't coming down from preaching. Amen. I ain't going to do it. I, what are you, I, I've been preaching the King James Version all these years. I ain't coming down. No, sir. You, look, you listen to me right now. You say, well, I know so-and-so. You better watch out. He may have changed. He may not be the same preacher you used to know. Am I right? How many of you know some preacher right now that used to have power and the fire of God in him that's changed? Hold on up high. I want to see him. I do. They don't have it no more. They're speakers. They're, they're ear ticklers. Yep. They're men pleasers. Yep. Hello? Amen. How much? Yeah. Preach it. Come on. I'm, I'm going to preach it. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I started out way back then. Amen. Amen. Didn't even know how to tie Amen. Don't know too much yet. <laughs> Didn't know anything. But I just knew God had called me to preach. Amen. Yes, sir. November, October, November the 23rd, 1943. That's when He called me. And uh, I just started preaching. Preaching. I knew I had to have the power of God on me. I knew I had to have His touch on me. I started that way. And I'm going to wind up that way. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. I ain't coming. Now, they won't know Nehemiah to come down. Preachers, the devil wants you to come down. The devil wants you to step down. Say, well, now, everything's changed. People are more highly educated today. Oh, I like that lesson, Brother Charles. Not by men's wisdom. Not by mighty big words. You know, I don't know no big words. And I can tell by looking at you, you wouldn't know what I was talking about if I used them. <laughs> you can't kid me. You're a country boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes. Listen to me. This world doesn't need more education. It needs more preachers in the pulpit that will preach the Word of God. Yes, Amen? Amen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My grandson tickled me. I have got two midnight oil burning, praying, trying to find more. I believe you all study. Yes, yes. Me and my grandson and another preacher was in the, my office one day, and the preacher said, you mean you've got two of them degrees? And yeah, my grandson spoke up and said, he don't even know how to spell them. <laughs> I got them, but I don't know how to spell them. Amen. I won't come down. I'm going to keep on preaching until God calls me home. I don't want to come down. I I have no desire to come down. Oh, listen. There's nothing I'd rather do than to have the hand of God on me. And to preach with the power of God. Amen. I've preached on street corners and jailhouses and prisons, wherever. But I've never found anything that was more exciting and more thrilling than to stand with God's anointing on you. For He hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Amen. Yes, sir. I remember. Amen. Oh, Sister Cox, bless her heart. She was bedridden. Couldn't go. And I'd visit her ever, every time I could. Oh, she loved the Lord. She loved the Lord. And I'd go in to visit her. We'd talk a little while. She said, Preacher, would you preach a little for me? And I said, I'll do it. Boy, I'd loosen my tie and get comfortable and just rear back and preach. Amen. 
She'd say, rest a while and do it again. <laughs> Just do it again. One day I preached five times to her. Amen. 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 See, if you if you belong to God, you like preaching too. Amen. If you belong to God, there's no, there's nothing that'll satisfy you and uh, make you be uh, happy in the Lord like old time preaching. Amen. Amen. If I'm right, raise your hand. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I ain't a coming down. Amen. I'm gonna keep on. Amen. 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 Yes, now, brother Paul, I ain't like him. Well, she was, but ain't you know Paul one night got all stirred up, preached preached all night. Amen. I mean all night. Now don't get excited. Don't quit looking at your watch. I'm just going to preach a little while. And one old boy had got there late to hear Paul preach and sit down in the wind and fell out. That showed me he was more out than he was in. If he was more in, he'd have fell on the inside. But he fell out. Paul went down to where he fell out. <laughs> well, he didn't pull a Benny Hen on him, but <laughs> he said his life still in him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, folks, there's nothing in the world that will bring old sinners under conviction like old time preaching. It was it was preaching. I, I dare say, how many of you was a preaching of the Word of God that got you under conviction? It was me, Amen. It was it was preaching. I don't mean just uh, speaking. It was preaching, preaching. I mean preaching. I ain't coming down. I'm going to keep on. Well, I got to hurry up. You know, I look at back in the Bible. In those days came John the Baptist. Preaching. Yeah. Preaching. I ain't coming down. Am I getting too close? It getting too close to me. <laughs> he came preaching in the wilderness. Oh, listen. God chose preaching. Yes, it's pre- I ain't coming down. I just ain't going to do it. Then next of all, let me hurry. I ain't coming down. There's something. Oh, I won't touch, oh, I won't touch on this. I ain't coming down from praying. Amen. 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 There's some of you right now, the devil's already got you down for praying, haven't you? How many of you have a little have a little prayer yet? Now lay me down to sleep. I pray you Lord, my soul to keep. If I sit down before I wake up, I pray you Lord, my soul to keep. Amen. Amen, brother. No, no. The effectual fervent. Amen. Red hot Amen. prayer. Now watch it, watch it. Here's the word you don't run over. Of a what kind of man? Say it again. What? Oh, you're not saying it loud enough. What kind? Righteous man. What kind of prayer? The effectual. Amen. The effectual. Fervent prayer. Amen. Hello? Of a righteous, godly, separated, dedicated, consecrated, fully in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, availeth much. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Just at all. God ain't listen to me. God said he can be touched. Yes, Hello? Amen. He can be touched. Yes, amen. You know what God's waiting for right now? He touched me. Yes. Oh, yes. He touched me. Yes. I know the joy that floods my soul. Yes, Something happened and now I know He touched me. Yes. Amen. That's good. Amen. Have you ever had him to touch you? Yes. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. Yes. Have you ever had him to touch him? Yes. Told by I said, hey, come down. Get away from all that praying business. <laughs> hey, come down. Get away from that family owner. Good, brother. Amen. 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 Come on, hey, stop all that praying. Yep. 
If the devil can... Listen, and you know when you've got through to God. You know when you've got through to God. When you've touched Him. Yeah. Oh, Amen. I ain't coming down. Amen. Oh, I ain't coming down. I like this guy. In the book of Acts, the Bible said, and when they had sang a song, no, watch it. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was Amen. shaken. Amen. 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 Yeah. You'd want to call 911, wouldn't you? <laughs> They'd had more than a prayer yet. Right, right. Amen. And when they had prayed, Amen. the place where they were assembled was shaken. You know when we're going to get the job done? When we pray. God said, go into that closet. Shut the door. And what? Pray. I ain't coming down. Old Tobias said, hey, Blue, come down, stop all that. I said to you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In the book of Acts, chapter 12 and 12. And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Oh, praying. Look up here. Look up here. Here I stand. The product of a mother's prayers and God's touch. I remember so well after Daddy had put that little box of down at the foot of my bed full of whiskey for me to bootleg out the back door at night. My mother in the night would slip beside of my bed. And oh, I'd pull the covers as tight as I could. And she'd lay her hand on me. And say, God, save my boy. Amen. Touch him, Lord. Don't let him be like his daddy. Amen. Amen. Save him, dear Jesus. <laughs> Amen. How? Oh. He did. Amen. Amen. I ain't coming down from praying. Then I'm not. There's another thing, and I'll hurry and close. I don't care how many times they look up and say, Come down from the old time power. They're going to do it. Amen. I saw the effects of this modern religion. I don't like it. I don't want it. I ain't coming down from that power. Oh, they were all with one accord when the Holy Ghost descended as a promise by our Lord. Amen. I ain't coming down. Amen, brother. That's right. I ain't coming down. Amen. Now you can if you want to, but I ain't gonna do it. Amen. If you have to, if you get a chance to come to my funeral and walk up by the box where I'm laying at, you say, He didn't come down. Amen. 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 He didn't come down. He held on to God, believed God, and believed God was still on the throne. I ain't coming down. Amen. Amen. Out of one, one more thing. I ain't coming down. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't coming down. Listen, you can go in a bookstore, a Bible bookstore today, and RSV, all the other kinds, 
Here is the Word of God. This is the King James Word. This is the Word of God. I say, this is the Word of God. It's inerrant. It's the infallible. It's the eternal, ever-breathed Word of God. Amen. Yes, sir. I ain't coming down. That's right. What light is that shining so brightly for me? That gave me such courage to write for you, Spirit. Oh, I hope for my trusting so ever shall be God's wonderful book divine. I love the old Bible. A light on my pathway to shine. Hallelujah. I ain't coming down. Amen. Amen. I ain't coming down. You know, Brother Charles, have you heard about this new thing that they... It may have already passed. I don't know. But they got it going anyhow. Did you know? Right now it's coming up. A bill's coming up in the house. That if I get up here and preach on homosexualism, if I preach on men marrying men, if I preach on any of this cultism and all of that, did you know that they can charge me with hate crime and put me in jail for 20 years? Yes. Come on, brother. I ain't coming down. That's exactly right. I ain't coming down. I ain't coming down. I I said I ain't coming down. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. I ain't got 20 left here. No, (laughs) no. Oh, hallelujah! Yes, somebody every once in a while sneak me some nanner pudding in. That's right, brother. Amen. I ain't coming down. Amen, preacher. You can turn your back on him if you want to. Come on. But he's been so good to me. Amen. That's right. Save me. Hallelujah. Sanctified me. Hallelujah. I ain't going to back up from that word. I like it, don't you? Set apart. Praise the Lord. Oh, I love it. I ain't coming down. Dinners, I'm just, I'm give out, but I just can't stop. I ain't coming down from old time praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. It may make you ashamed. Did you share somebody in here a while ago raising your hand and go, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I like it. Amen. I like it. Amen. It didn't embarrass me. Amen. Not one bit in the world. That's oh. You go in somebody's church. Oh, damn. Yes, sir. Yes. Here's a friend of mine. I haven't saw him a long time. You like? Do you like what's going on over here today? I bet you'll be back home. <laughs> hey, man, brother. Hey, man. Hey, man. Yeah. My mama was a shouter. She got shouting the J.C. Penis one <laughs> Yes. The Lord like scared them all to death. She shouted anywhere. It didn't make no difference. Amen. She's been run out of more stores than you can take a stick at. Amen. She. <laughs> she wasn't ashamed of what the Lord had done for her. It didn't make her no difference. She'd pray. She'd go down the street just praying. And <laughs> Amen. Oh. I ain't going. I ain't coming down. Amen. I, I, listen to me. It's just not a matter of me brought up that way. There's something in my soul that makes me want to praise the Lord. The Bible said, "Let everything that has breath praise Him." Amen. Amen. Nehemiah twelve, verse forty-three. Also in that day, they offered great sacrifice and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard of all. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I ain't going to come down. And in Psalms 105, 150 rather, at verse 6, let everything that hath breath. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, in Acts chapter 3, I, I, don't, I can't remember whether I preached it up here or not. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, you know, that old boy has been laying there sick for all those years. And all of a sudden, Peter and John came up and said, Trust as we have you by thee in the name of Jesus Christ, yes. about rise up walk. And the Bible said, His ankle bones <laughs> yes, received strength. Amen. And the Bible said, He went in with them. Now, listen to this. Now, this is really going to put you, some of you Baptists, in a bind. Yep. The Bible said, He went in with them, yep. Yep. walking, and then his leaper went into high gear. Yep. <laughs> went in with them, walking and Leaping. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me ask you, how's your leaper working? Amen. How long has it been since your leaper just got completely beside itself? <laughs> well, you know, I'm rather, I'm rather dignified myself. I bet if you'd been laying there for 38 years and all of a sudden uh, the, uh, the, the preacher said, Get up! He said, I believe I will. <laughs> Hello? I believe you could have saw that fellow 20 years from right then and said, Hey, up there at the gate that day. What, do you remember anything? Oh, he said, I haven't got a bit of it. Amen. Oh, folks, listen. We've sat around and told us that it got us down up the wall. And in many cases, we've dried up. Hello? Yes, sir. Did you see what happened here a while ago? This altar filled up. I loved it. Did you like that? Yes, sir. I liked it. Praise the Lord. The altar filled up. There's pastors that would literally have a cardiac arrest if that happened to their church. They couldn't stand it. They wouldn't know what to do, would they? I, I went to a church one time, and the pastor was showing me around, and he showed me the baptistry, and you know what was in it? Christmas decorations. <laughs> I said, how do you baptize? Oh, he said, we had not had none of that in 10 years. Hello? Come down! They've got to come down. I ain't going to do it. I am not going to do it. Will you say that with me? I won't come down. I won't come down. I won't come down. One more time. I won't come down. Amen. 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 I want God to use me the rest of my days. Pray for me. Not that I'll come down. No, I ain't coming down. I ain't coming down. I love what God's put me in. And I can't come down. There may be some of you right now that has come down. You've come to a place in your life that you say, well, there's no need in all that praying and all that preaching and all that shouting and all that praising. I believe I'll just come down. I want them to come to the piano, please. I'm going to give a slap out. If you're here today and the devil somehow has discouraged you and got you to come down and got you from not doing what you know God's pleased with, Got you cold and indifferent. Got you backslid. Old Tobias got you down. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Every Christian praying. I wonder if there's somebody right now that raise your hand, said preacher. I used to be on fire for God. I used to be I used to walk with God. But preacher, somehow I've come down. Play softly, please, honey, would you please? Somehow I've gone backwards. I don't enjoy my salvation like I used to. Oh, I don't have an altar in my home like I used to have. I don't pray and I don't witness enough. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Yes, I see that hand. See that hand. See that hand. Oh, I see it. Oh, yes, I see that hand. Father... We're going to stand and sing. I pray, Lord, today that many will come and renew their vows and their covenants. And, Lord, if there's somebody lost, help them to get saved. 
Oh, dear Lord, right now, help them, God, stand upon the wall. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's